Hi, this is a three part video and blog post series that teaches you how to create an application like Instagram. Not the whole application, but the filters part where you select different filters and you apply the effects on the image and then you select the intensity of each effect. So that is one of the coolest part of Instagram. So we'll learn how to do that in Python using OpenCV. So this will be a three part series. Now this tutorial serves as the first part of the series. Here you will learn all about mouse and trackbar events. What types of different mouse events you can track in OpenCV. How to track the XY coordinates of the click and draw shapes there and resize them accordingly. How to create a mini paint application. And finally, how to use the trackbar to move around objects in the image frame. Now this tutorial will not only set you up for the upcoming tutorials, but it will give you a foundation of how to work with these type of external events inside OpenCV and do things with it. So this will be really cool and very useful for many other upcoming applications. So let's get started. Now this is the Jupyter Notebook that we'll be using in today's tutorial to follow along. And not only this is a well-documented notebook, but it also comes with a blog post that you can use to follow along besides this video tutorial. And the link for that will be in the description below. So let's get started. So here's what the what we'll be creating. This is sort of, you know, like final idea. An application which allows you to select various filters, moon, lot, you know, like different sort of filters by selecting them. And then uh, uh, the other thing will be to adjust the intensity of each filter, uh, how much uh, effect uh, intensity of the filter should be applied on each image. So two different things that you need to learn how to select filters. You know, instead of obviously a touch interface, we'll be working with mouse. So we'll need to understand how to work with mouse clicks and okay, grab the XY coordinates of the mouse. Uh, from the uh, you know like uh, mouse using OpenCV and then how to work with this slider. A slider is called a trackbar in OpenCV. So how to create a slider where we can uh, adjust the slide uh, you know like uh, adjust the values depending on how the user is you know like sliding and grab those values and do things with uh, those values. So not only will we learn to create this application with these two things, but over the course of this whole series, you will learn a lot of other things, how to work with color channels, you know, advanced image processing techniques, and many other interesting things that will go a long way. Just, you know, like other than creating this application, you will be using those things and concepts in a lot of other applications and stuff. So um, let's get started. So the first one and the today's tutorial is this one, part one, working with mouse events and track bars in pencil. So this is what we'll be uh, working with. So the first thing that we need to do is to import the required libraries. We'll be working with OpenCV and NumPy. So I'm gonna import them. And now to let's start with the mouse events first. So the mouse events, there are many that you can uh, track in OpenCV and a whole list of them is, you know, like I've linked here and this is a whole list, a whole exhaustive list of all the events that you can track. But you don't need to remember all of them. Most likely in most of the cases, you'll be working with some of one of these events. So these are the 10 most common events, uh, mouse move event, a mouse, uh, mouse left button down event, right, right button down event, left button double click event, uh, right button double click event so stuff like that so these are the most common events that you will be working with in most applications so just take a look at this again all, all the things are nicely documented and commented so make sure to go over this notebook uh, after watching this tutorial or while watching this tutorial and also the blog posts so the first thing that we need to do and before that let me just explain that to attach uh, and to work with mouse events in OpenCV, you need to attach this. You need to call this function and attach this mouse callback function to a window. So you use this cv2.set mouse callback and attach it to a window name. And then you also pass in these two other variables on mouse and user data. Now user data is an optional, you know, like a variable which we won't be using. But this on mouse is a callback. It's a function that's triggered each time a mouse event is detected. Each time you move a mouse, each time you click a button. 
any left, right, mouse up, mouse down. So anything, this callback is triggered each time. So uh, this is how this works. These are the three variables that get uh, passed into this callback function. So this is the function that you need to use in order to uh, use mouse events in OpenCV. But before we can uh, obviously use this function, we need to create a window before, uh, right? So this is the uh, function that creates a window. So this is the window that whenever you use OpenCV, remember use cv2.imshow to display image windows and inside that window you create images. So for that to happen, you need to have a window. And this uh, line of code does that creates an empty window with the name webcam field. You can give it any name and it also, you know, like I pass this flag inside this, but this flag enables me to make it a resizable window that can uh, normally what OpenCV does, it creates a window with the same resolution as your camera. So um, what I want is that the window to be resizable so that I can create it, adjust it to the full width to have the full width of my monitor, right? So for that to happen, I need to pass this flag inside. Uh, so let me run this code. And when I run this code, you'll see that you have this sort of a window. An empty window pops up with the name webcam feed and it will be normally saying not responding because we just created an empty window. We didn't populate it with anything. We didn't associate it with anything. So uh, don't click around anywhere because this will crash your uh, program. Just minimize this right for now because we'll later on create the code that will fill up this uh, window. So now that we have created an empty window, we can use this function. But before that, the other thing that we need, uh, we have a window name, right? We can use webcam feed pass in, in here, but we also need one other thing. Now this is the optional argument or user data, so we won't be using that. So the other thing that we need is to create this callback function on mouse callback function. Now this function will be called whenever we move the mouse. So the first thing that I want to create is an application, a simple uh, Python script that does something like this. So let me just run this. So so I'm going to show you first what I'm, what I'm creating right now. So this is what I'm creating, as I plan to create. A simple Python script that whenever I click the left button, a circle will be created. And whenever I click the right button, a rectangle will be created. And whenever I click the middle button, the whole thing will be cleared. So left button, left button, left button, left, 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 a circle, a right, 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 rectangle, and middle button clears up the whole uh, canvas. So this is a Python script that I'm going to be creating. For that to happen, I have two pieces of uh, uh, cells or two pieces of code. So this is the part which opens up the camera, attaches the mouse callback function and you know, like displays frame by frame the whole thing. And then this is the function that actually uh, monitors which button I'm, I am clicking and then how to you know, like draw uh, rectangles and circles on the canvas. Uh, so this is the part where uh, that's being handled. And this is the uh, mouse callback function. I'm, I'm calling it draw shapes. This is the same function here on mouse. So this is the callback function. I'm calling it again draw shapes. And when I create this set mouse callback in below, I'm passing it the window name webcam feed, which I created above, and then this draw shapes function. Now again, the callback function, the window name. Two things are being passed inside this set mouse callback so that I can use it in this uh, particular script, right? So let me first maybe go over, you know, like this piece of code. Now this is the callback function, uh, which is being called each time I'm moving the mouse on, uh, triggering any of the mouse events, which you just saw above. The other ones, but like these are the common side. So each time the mouse event is triggered, some default variables are being passed here. Uh, we have, we get event X, Y, flags. This is being passed by default with OpenCV. So uh, you can ignore these last two. And the only thing that we'll be working with is these, these three, these three variables. So whenever you uh, trigger any of the mouse events, you get these three variables. One, the first one is the event, the type of event that gets triggered. So if you uh, hold down the left button, this event will be triggered, left button down. If I hold down the right button, this event will be triggered, right button down. And whenever I you know, like press the middle button, this event will be triggered, middle button, down. So these are the events that are being triggered each time you press any of the button or even if you move the mouse, a mouse move button is triggered. But this XY coordinate, the next one is the live location of the mouse. Any time you, you know, like you're moving the mouse at any point, these variables are being updated with the live coordinates of the mouse. So here's what I'm doing. 
I'm checking to make sure which sort of event is triggered. If the uh, left button is down, I'm drawing a circle. If the right button is down, I'm drawing a rectangle. And the location of that circle and that rectangle is uh, depends upon the XY coordinate of the mouse. So I'm uh, you know, like passing the center of the circle as the XY location, current location of the mouse. And similarly for the rectangle, I'm uh, doing a, some sort of similar thing where I'm drawing a rectangle at the place where the mouse was clicked, right? So I'm using the XY coordinates of the current mouse location. And for the middle click, all I'm doing is just I'm clearing up the whole screen. And for that to happen, uh, what I'm doing, I'm, I'm clearing up the canvas and initializing it again. So canvas is just like a black, simply a black empty frame, empty frame of the same size of the, you know, like the window. So NP.0, so 0 is black, 255 is white whenever you're working with a single channel image, or even if you're working with a three channel image and all you have three stacked mat matrices, you, you set them all to zero, you get a black image. So this is what hap what's happening. When I draw a rectangle, I normally draw the rectangle on an empty canvas image, which I'm initializing here. So this is the whole script for initializing the camera, visualizing the camera feed. So here I'm uh, initializing the camera. So you can use, if I, I, you have multiple cameras attached, you can increment this counter and uh, you work with them. Optionally, I'm also using a specific resolution for my particular cam, this is optional. And then I'm creating this empty canvas. So this is where I'll be drawing. So I can't just directly draw on each image frame. So here's what's happening here. Each time you see this sort of a frame, this is being updated uh, multiple times in each second. So if this was a 30 FPS camera, 30 times you will see a new frame. So if I draw a circle on the previous frame, it will disappear on the next frame. And to make it stable, to make all these circles and rectangles appear on each new frame, the trick for that to happen is instead of drawing on this video frame, you draw it on a black and empty canvas and you store that canvas in a variable. And each time a new frame is read, you take the contents of that canvas and paste it to the video frame. So this, all of this exact thing is being done on this piece of line. In this piece of line, I'm re reading a frame, a new frame every time you know, like in a loop. Uh, and, and every time I uh, read a frame from the camera, I just check everything is okay. The frame has been read correctly. And then if uh, that is the case, I update the frame. I update the frame with the contents of the canvas. So this is the piece of line that takes the contents of the canvas and pastes it to the current frame. And then I show that current frame to you using CP to show. And if you press the escape uh, button on the keyboard, then the whole loops uh, breaks up and the camera gets released. You need to release the camera. And we also destroy the whole window. Right. So this is the whole script yeah. above what we have is a whole uh, script that catches left, right, button, down events, and then does things and, and draws on the canvas. And here below, we create an empty black canvas. We uh, create a, a window. We attach that window to the mouse callback and we attach the callback function above to this uh, 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 mouse callback function. And then we just uh, go iterate over a loop where we read frame by frame. And then we modify each new frame uh, according to the contents uh, written on the canvas. And then we show that frame to the user. So that's what's happening. Now, one thing that, uh, one limitation of this script is that the circle size and the rectangle size is fixed. How about we adjust the size and let the user adjust the size. So this is what's exactly happening in the next piece of uh, snippet. So in this piece of snippet, here's what, what, what's happening. So here I can adjust the circle size. So if I move around, you know, like I can adjust the circle size. Similarly, I can create a rectangle of adjustable size. I can just uh, click the circle starts being drawn. And as I move about, as I go far and further, further and further, the circle gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So this is what's happening. So uh, yeah, so I can create circles and rectangles of arbitrary sizes and I can show it on uh, the whole uh, interface. So to make that happen, all you need to do or, or all you need to change is instead of, you know, like drawing a circle, the left button, whenever you uh, hold down the left button, you just uh, initialize two variables called start X and start Y. Now these are the two variables that will hold the location or store the location of the XY coordinates where, where, wherever in the whole image you clicked. So it will store the, uh, you know, like store the central location for that circle. 
and whenever you move the mouse so this is the event that will triggers whenever you move the mouse you uh, uh, you note down the difference of the, uh, the initial xy location and the current xy location of the mouse so if i supposedly if i you know like let me just run this again if i started from the corner here so this is uh, x0 y0 so this is the uh, right now the x uh, so starting location of this circle is 0 0 and if I move around about now the x and y is all of, both of them are increasing so if I increase in the x direction or if I increase in the y direction or if I increase in both by this so this is how you you, you get you know like the difference between the uh, new coordinates right now the mouse and the difference between you know like uh, the, the, the difference between the x y starting x y and the current x y increases as I move further and further away from the starting point. This is how I you know like uh, draw a new circle each time the mouse moves. Now I have let go of the mouse, so this has been uh, it's not it's not being drawn anymore. So let me show you again the code for that. Each time uh, I start drawing a circle, I hold down the left button. So at this point in time, I initialize these two variables as the current x and y of the mouse. And as soon as I start moving away from that coordinates, this uh, difference gets bigger and bigger. So the, as soon as I you know, like move away. And uh, then I use these difference values, these variables to draw a circle in real time again and again. So this circle is continuously being drawn as soon, uh, you know, like uh, as I'm moving my mouse away and away from the, as, every time I move my mouse, this circle, a new circle is, is being drawn on top of that previous circle. The radius is equal to how much the difference is, is between the previous x, y and uh, the current x, y. So as far, you move further and further away, you get a bigger and bigger radius and you get a bigger and bigger circle drawn each time you move the mouse. The same logic is happening for the rectangle. So you get the start and x, y for the rectangle and as soon as you move away from the initial coordinates, the rectangle gets bigger and bigger. So the same sort of logic is being applied to, to create the rectangles and to create the circles. And then uh, one other thing, whenever I let go of the button, the draw shape is equal to none. So whenever that happens, we know that we have, we are done drawing that circle. It's now time to move on to draw maybe a new shape. So that draw shape variable is uh, equated to none. Uh, so when, whenever that is done, this won't be none. This condition will not be true and this condition again will not be true unless I draw start drawing again a new circle or a new rectangle. So this is what's happening and, and then lastly we have this repeated code which clears up the canvas whenever you press the middle button. So that is all uh, what uh, that, that is happening in this piece of code. Uh, this is sort of the same thing uh, you know like that that was it. Now one thing that you you know like you might wonder how about instead of creating an application that lets you draw circles and rectangles how about drawing anything like a mini, like a mini paint application so this is exactly what I did in this piece of uh, code so this is again another on click uh, a callback function for the mouse called draw and it takes in the same variables and this time what I'm going to do is draw anything like like a mini paint application or draw with the mouse on the screen. So for that to happen, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, uh, have these events. Whenever the left button is down, the mode will be paint. Whenever the right button is down, the mode will be erased. So this is like a paint and eraser application. And whenever the mode, mode is paint, I'm going to check the condition here. If the mode is paint, I'm going to draw a line on the, uh, you know, like canvas. And that line will be just like, you know, like drawing, taking the previous XY coordinates and then updating it with the new coordinates and you draw a line. So each time you move the mouse, you get a new XY pair, right? The XY coordinates of the mouse updates each time you move the mouse. So what I do is just draw a line from the previous XY coordinates to the new XY coordinates. And this way you just draw a line. And the color of that line is, uh, I'm also uh, making this paint application uh, uh, so that you can select different colors. So I'm working with three colors right now. I'm gonna show that in a bit. So this is the paint mode. Whenever I uh, draw, want to paint, I have this mode, mode turn, uh, uh, you know, like left button down, it, it, the mode becomes paint. Right button down, the mode becomes erase. So whenever the right button is down, I draw, and again, I'm also, again, gonna draw a line, but this time I'm gonna draw a line with a black color. So color, because of zero, 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 this is black. 
So whenever you draw with black color on a black canvas, it will erase all the stuff that comes on that same line, right? So if I have a color a rectangle or anything drawn out in any color, if I paste 000 on the exact same space, it will erase that and it will become, you know, like part of the black canvas. So this will erase the previous written content whenever I draw with the black. So this way, this becomes an eraser mode. So yeah, so this is what's happening here. Every time, you know, like uh, I'm moving the mouse, I'm painting on the canvas uh, and the mode is either set to paint or erase depending upon if I'm drawing with the left, uh, if I had left button uh, out or a right button out. And this is the code where I'm selecting, you know, like color panels. So let me just show you what I mean by color panels. So, so this is the application. I can draw on the screen by this. So this is the paint mode, right? And I'm doing the left button down. If I do the right button down, I can uh, erase these things. So I can, I'm drawing with black color now, zero, zero, zero. So this erases all these things. And uh, these are the three color panels that are there. And right now I'm drawing with this default color, but if I double click here, now this color will be selected. So this is being drawn right now. So if I double click here, now this double click here. Okay, now this yellow is being uh, selected and now I'm going to draw with the yellow color, right? So this is how, and you can add many more different colors. So let me show you the code for selecting these color palettes. So here's what's happening here. Whenever, whenever I uh, do the double button, uh, left button double click, so this is the event that's get uh, triggered whenever I do the left button double click. I uh, note down where that event was triggered. What, where was the mouse XY location when that happened? So I have three ROIs, so three locations in the image. So this, these are the three top locations. One is the middle top, one is the right top, and one is the left top. So you can select any sort of location, but I have uh, gone ahead with these sort of locations. So whenever I am, my mouse is present on this section of the screen, I'm going to set the color to orange. Whenever it's present, on, I think this section of the screen, it's going to be set to pink. Whenever I'm, you know, like mouse is present in another section, it's going to be set to yellow. The color is going to be set to yellow. So again, you can go along with any different sections. You have to come up with them. So I've, uh, uh, you know, like I, I've, I've gone ahead with by using the width instead of, uh, you know, like uh, you can put constant values, but because I wanted this to work with across different screen sizes, across different camera feeds and make it generalizable to everyone's own uh, uh, monitor and uh, screen. So I used the width and uh, the height of the, you know, like the camera. So that, uh, and then I use, use some percentages of that and uh, you know, like divided with, with this number. So it sort of generalizes with different camera screens. Again, you can just put constant values. It would work fine for you. So this is the whole code for uh, creating this paint application where you can select uh, different colors for color palettes and then draw it out or erase it. So that's the whole call function, which allows you to create this mini paint application. And on the uh, script side, uh, it is pretty much the same code that we have previously gone over. You initialize the camera, you read frame by frame, you, uh, you know, like uh, you replace the camera parts with the uh, uh, updated canvas. And that's it. The extra thing that I think we did here is this part, which is just drawing out those color palettes with cv 2 dot rectangles and filling them up with the required colors. So this is just for visual purposes so that you know where to click on the screen to activate a particular color. So that is all. Other than that, we're just showing the camera feed and uh, you know, like clearing up when you uh, exit out. So that is all uh, uh, that you need to know to get started with working with the mouse events and uh, uh, using the mouse in OpenCV. Now let's talk about how to get started with track bars in OpenCV. So if you're creating an app like Instagram and you need to adjust intensity, so you need a slider and that slider is something like this and it's called a track bar in OpenCV. So to create something like this, you will uh, use this function cv2.createTrackBar 
and you will pass the trackpad name. You will, uh, si similar to the uh, callback function of uh, the mouse, you will uh, pass in the window name and then you will also pass in the callback function which is called the on change function. And then there are two other vari uh, variables which is the value and the count and these are explained here. This is the starting value of the slider. So whenever you create a slider, you have the starting value. When uh, the program launches where the pointer would, the slider would be on the whole slider. It, uh, it, it, it's not necessary to have this pointer at the end, uh, at the start or at the end. You can have it anywhere in between. Now this will be the starting point. This is defined here, the value variable. And then this is the count, which is uh, what the maximum value of the trackbar would be. So you can have anything from 0 to 100, 0 to 100, 0. Uh, the, the initial value will always be 0. But the end value is something that you can choose. You can set it to 100, you can set it to 200, or any other number. So that's how this works. And then whenever you change the position of the trackbar, this function will be triggered. This is a callback function that you will create on change and this will be called. Now, when I'm going to be using track bars, I'm not going to use this callback function. Instead, what I'm going to do is use this function, cv2.getTrackbarPosition. Now, this function will tell me every uh, at any point in time what the current position of the track bar is. So, I will be using this function to get the latest track bar values whenever you change the position. So, this way, the, the way to use this function is pretty simple. You just pass in the track bar name which you want to uh, get the uh, value for and then you uh, uh, tell it the window name which the track bar is attached to and then you, uh, you it will return to you the latest track bar position. So that's how this works. So so here's the code for that. Uh, it's a pretty you know, like short code uh, and most of the things are repeated from the previous one. So you initialize the camera, you initialize the uh, window as webcam feed then we, uh, you know, like create the frame height and the width uh, by cutting it from the camera. And then we create this function. This is the actually callback function called nothing. I'm calling it nothing because I'm not doing anything inside it. I'm just having this Python pass variable, which will you know, like pass it. So I'm not doing anything inside this callback function. Again, you, it's up to you. You can do, if you want to do stuff whenever the trackball position changes, other than getting the value of the new position, then you can do that inside this function. This is the callback function. Um, and and uh, because I don't want to do anything inside it, I'll just create an empty function. And and uh, and I have to do this because it's necessary to create the callback function. It's necessary. So I create this nothing callback function and I pass it inside this strike bar as nothing. So uh, just pass create a nothing function that does nothing and include that nothing function inside this strike bar line, right? So uh, the next thing, uh, uh, the next thing that I'm going to do is give it a name, give that trackbar a name. I'm calling it a radius because the intention of this code is this. So let me just show you what I'm going to do with this piece of snippet. So this is the whole code. So here I have a circle and I can adjust the radius of the circle by doing this. So I can adjust the radius and the radius goes all the way from zero to hundred. Again, you can increase this value if you want. And then we have this X value. I can adjust the x coordinate of the circle and then I can adjust the y coordinate of the circle. Now this is just a very basic uh, Python script but it will demonstrate to you how you can use track bars and get the updated coordinates and then use those coordinates to do stuff on the screen. So let's close this up and instead let me not just close this up and, and show the exact things that I've created here. So this is the radius track bar one. This is the X coordinate track bar and this is the Y coordinate track bar. As you see, whenever I launch the program, let me close this up and launch this again. The starting point is 50 for each of them as defined here. And the ending point is uh, for the radius is 100. If I did 200, then whenever I reached, uh, when I reached the, uh, to the end, this instead of being 100, it will be 200 or whatever the value I put here. And then for the, uh, obviously for the X coordinate, the, uh, 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 the final value will be the width of the frame because I need to go toward, uh, make it go towards the end of the screen. And similarly for the height, it will be, uh, the Y coordinate will be, the frame height will be the end, the final value. So that the uh, circle goes all the way to the end. So that's how I create three different track bars and uh, I named them and I attached them to a, web, uh, a window and I they give them starting values and I give them the range. So, and, and then once you have created the track bars, the rest of the code is pretty much the same. So uh, you read frame by frame. And then here's how you extract the camera, uh, the track bar positions. 
So whenever the trackbar changes its position, whenever I do something like this, 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 or you know, like whenever I adjust the position, the, the that particular trackbar gets updated and the new value is saved in this variable. If I'm changing the X or Y or radius, and then I use these three variables to adjust the circle, to replace the, the X, Y coordinates, the center of the circle to any point that the X, Y changes to, or to adjust the radius, uh, uh, you know, like at, uh, 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 with the radius value that I change it to. So this is how you can control uh, the the you know like uh, the radius, the x y coordinates of the whole circle on, on the screen. And it's uh, as I said, this is just a basic demonstration of how to use the track bars. In the next tutorial, I'll show you uh, you know like how you can use this track bar and uh, mouse events to uh, select different filters and adjust the intensities of those filters. So that will be really exciting. By the way, while creating this application, it sort of reminded me of an old game that I used to play in the past. It was like a bouncing ball game where it was uh, where we, you, we controlled a ball uh, throughout the screen. But instead, uh, right now what I'm doing here is also I'm controlling a ball, sort of a circle across the screen and in X, Y direction. But it's not uh, you know, like there's no game mechanics, there's no physics involved. But there's a way you can do that. You can use iMac library to add physics to it, to add acceleration, to add mass, to add force. And you can also tune these values in real time using track bars and sliders. So this is all really interesting if you combine sets like these. And all of this is explained in my course. If I don't know if you're enrolled in it or not, but computer vision for building cutting edge applications is something, a course where I uh, touch upon these very interesting uh, concepts and I merge them together. So uh, it's something that you should definitely check it out. And the link for that again would be in the description. Finally, at the end, I have this uh, optional assignment if you're interested in, uh, uh, in it. So here, you know, like I'm just giving you a so sort of a challenge that in create three track bars that adjust the RGB uh, color channels of your webcam feed in real time. So every time you change RGB, you create color effects. So this is something that we will do in the next tutorial and we'll build on top of these concepts and create a very interesting application where you will be able to adjust different filters, apply the effects, adjust the intensity. It will be a lot of fun. So I'll see you in the next one. Bye.